Oh. Okay, my turn. I am the Hulk. I am Abomination. Oh, I'm the Hulk. I'm so sad. I don't know how to defend myself. Hey, what you say? Did you know Americans see 4,000 to 10,000 ads per day? Did you know that number quadruples when on a pirating website? Did you also know that Xbox and PlayStation plan on putting in-game ads too? But they're only for free-to-play games, so I bet things are gonna be just fine. What I'm getting at is ads are everywhere. They seem unescapable nowadays, especially in the US. Like, look at Times Square. That's just one big advertisement circle jerk. We see them in everything we watch, everything we read, every mobile game we play. Like you can never get past one level on almost every phone game without getting a 30 second ad for another garbage mobile game that I also download because the ad made me play along with it, so now I'm interested. You see how these things be tricking you? They know we getting dumber and dumber by the day because we're on our phones 24 seven. But just because I like to scroll through the best TikTok has to offer, doesn't mean I'm completely blind to my surroundings. In recent years, I've been noticing the commercials and ads we see are a lot more vapid. Almost all of them are either a boring advert telling you how good their product is and just showcasing it, or they try to be trendy with it like this. Are you winning, Cheese? Shut up, bitch. Or this. Generating reactions from everyone, like the memer. I love children. It sucks. This supposed to make me buy your product? This make me want to turn off the TV! It's sad that the only good ads we see nowadays are from obscure mobile games. Now those guys know how to sell a product. The only commercials you can look forward to now to be half decent is the Super Bowl ones. And even the ones this year were mid. None of them stood out. Yeah, sure, the Breaking Bad Popcorners one was eh, and Mr. Beast was talking about eating his balls or something. But like... I'm not gonna remember those next week. What the hell were these commercials? The only reason I watched the Super Bowl is for the commercials, not for no halftime show. And I didn't even know they play games during it. I watch for the commercials. And for the past few years, there hasn't really been one that I liked other than that Larry David one last year. And that was literally from an investment company that steals your money. It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. I don't think so. Commercials now are just booty, man. I have no interest in any of them. Like the one that's gonna pop up right now. Watch it, watch it be booty. Did you watch it? Did it suck? I bet you skipped it too. If you got ad block on, fuck you. What happened to commercials, man? Why can't we go back to the ones in the past? Back in the good old days. Not that far back. I'm talking about the ones back in the 2000s and 90s. Back when ads meant something. Like if you're gonna disrupt me from my regular scheduled programs, at least make it entertaining. And back then, they certainly were. I love the ones that were trying to make you laugh, make you giggle, make your cheeks jiggle. Like old Geico ads. With their goofy commercials, they hammered the fact in my brain that 15 minutes could save me 15% or more on car insurance at a young age when I used to think cars were just bigger bikes. I love that all of them were never serious and each of them were as nutty as the last. Like dogs ain't supposed to talk, bro. That's crazy. My personal favorite ones were the caveman commercials. It's so easy to use Geico.com. A caveman could do it. <laughs> what? Oh, no. I not cool. I did not no. know you were there. Yes. Where cavemen were offended by Geico's ad campaign because it was low-key racist towards cavemen. Can you imagine a commercial making fun of an entire ethnic group's intelligence like go on Amazon and order today. It's so easy a dog can do it. Okay, the fuck I do to you? And there's multiple commercials showing their reaction to these ads. One of them even go to therapy because of it. This really messes them up. They thought they were past this. They thought they lived in a more progressive society. <laughs> but sadly... They still have a long way to go. But those commercials were funny. But even though I know I could save 15% or more on car insurance with Geico, I'm more of a progressive guy. But that's only because I had a huge crush on Flo. There are also Jack in the Box ads. Now, I've never eaten there myself, but if this dude's in there, I don't know if I'll feel comfortable going there. This dude seems very erratic. Because in the ads, this dude got no chill. He even called out Burger King for microwaving their burgers, which he didn't need to tell me that for me to know. But... Damn! You don't ever see companies going at each other's throats like this anymore. Unless it's Wendy's. But I still will never forgive them for that commercial. Speaking of commercials with no chill, those Pop-Tart commercials back then, 
were insane, bro. Because every human in these commercials would literally kill every walking, running, breathing pop tart in sight it doesn't matter if they have feelings it doesn't matter if they have emotions if you can cook them they will eat them like this one these pop tarts just had a baby and look what happens he so has your peanut butter well he's got your jelly time for a feeding mm. no! she just ate their newborn baby she's crazy and based on the other commercials and how often this happens she probably won't go to jail for it what's with these commercials discriminating against a certain group of people this needs to be studied and brought to light also also speaking about no chill this commercial about you can guess A condom commercial. This ad is not only hilarious, but it's genius. However, me personally, you could just show me the average one year tuition of college. And that's already enough for me to surgically attach one of these on me. I also remember watching one of the greatest commercials of all time, which is from Skittles, about that guy that whatever he touches turns into Skittles. That's awesome. Is it awesome? Well, you can't hold your newborn baby boy in your arms. Did you feed and dress yourself this morning? I didn't. I met a man on the bus today. I shook his hand. He'll never see his family again. I guess that's pretty awesome. I love how he straight up says he killed a random dude that day. Also, how he still regularly impulsively tries to pick up a ring and phone and shakes the man's hand, meaning that he most likely got this power recently, but we never know how. This shit got lore! Makes you think how he got these powers. Who gave it to him? Was it a disease? Was it Mr. Skittle himself? But I believe it was the Rothschilds family. Had to have been. They're behind everything. And when talking about lore, Commercials with story arcs are amazing. I'm talking about when a company has multiple commercials that tie in together as one story. So if you missed the last commercial, you probably wouldn't completely understand what's happening. Stuff like the goldfish commercials. I love these. These were like a whole TV series that I kept up with never missing an episode. As a kid, these commercials played all the time on kids channels like Nick and CN. And the story of the goldfish commercials span off six seasons. Yeah, this seasons to this shit. Buckle up. Taking place mostly under the bed of a boy's bedroom where there's a whole goldfish society, which I'm surprised this boy's bedroom isn't bug infested with how many goldfish food he has down there, which stars our main stars. Finn, the boring one, Gilbert, the shy one, Brooke, the girl, and Extreme, the extreme one. And the series follows their day-to-day -day lives. The first two seasons are more episodic with each commercial being kind of its own thing with only the first one being about how Finn is new to the goldfish world. It isn't until the start of season three when a new fish arrives, Swimmington, a guy who talks all fancy and presents himself as the talk of the town, even though he's just a dumb goldfish, I could eat him in one second. And he just moved in, so everybody else tries to show him around. The next commercial, we see Gilbert introduce Extreme who I'ma just call X from here on out to the neighbor. And when they meet, it turns out they know each other and they're brothers! Name is Extreme. <laughs> Calm down, little brother. <laughs> and when finding this out, Squimington calls X Fumbleton, where Extreme corrects him. <laughs> it's Extreme now, bro. Meaning that X is not his original name and he must have changed it to disassociate himself from his past. Which makes the viewer now wonder what happened in his past to move away from his home and family. And they set all this up in a 30 second commercial. Is this not a cinematic 
masterpiece. It isn't until two episodes later where we see an ad where Swimmington is reading and X is rocking out to his loud music. And Swimmington is constantly telling him to turn off the music until the speakers just break. Now, this seems like another filler ad, but it really isn't. You see, in this 15 seconds, we see the brothers' two contrasting personalities. We see Swim being the posh, I'm better than you peasants kind, and X being the stunt double, fun, cool, just the extreme kind of guy. In a normal setting, these guys would never gotten along with each other. They have no similarities other than coming from the same fish and also based on the interaction so far it shows they kind of hold not the strongest bond with each other with the next commercial revealing why with x's backstory x tells swimmington that the reason he left the pantry which was their original home was because he felt that it was depressing in there I and mean, it sure looks like it just floating around in straight lines doing nothing sounds like 1984 all over again and in this depression house x was the only one that stood out because he was the only person that didn't act like a robot doing tricks and stuff but failing at it and fumbling over hence his name og name fumbleton and since nobody really messed with him there not even his own brother he left and went to a new place where he says the people accept him for who he is now I have friends who accept me for who I am. Hmm. I can only imagine why. <laughs> Extreme, you gotta try this. That chalks up X's backstory, showing that he's a deeper character than what we initially thought he was. We first thought X was just a rowdy, happy-go-lucky guy. But after hearing his backstory, we know X is a believer, a dreamer, that looks to the future instead of letting his past nailing him down. He only will get back up and move forward. Extreme is truly extreme. How do Goldfish commercials have better character writing than 90% of Netflix shows? I don't know. But I do know that these are some of the greatest commercials. And this ain't even the best season. Season 4 with Gilbert getting trapped in a vacuum cleaner goes insane. But we'd be here all day if I went over each season on why this is the best thing to ever exist on television. This is the best thing to hit television since the Flintstones. Still ain't better than the Chef Boy ID commercial though. But you also know what else made a good memorable commercial back then? A jingle. Specifically, a completely original score. Something like 800 Empire. I still don't know what they do. I can't read. But I certainly remember the jingle by heart. A good song could make a commercial go down in history like the national anthem. Shoot, it could even replace it. And when I say memorable, I don't mean this. This is memorable in a bad way. I mean memorable like the Reese's Puffs ad. I always love to rap along with this ad whenever it came on. I'd even say this man's an inspiration to my own musical career. I wanted to be like this dude, man. I love this commercial so much, it had me searching for the dude rapping like he had more music to listen to. As if he was a real rapper. Turns out, he is! He goes by Lupo. And I started listening to his music because, you know, I know him as one of the best rappers to ever touch a bowl of cereal. But then I turned his music on to be shocked on what I seen and heard. In his music vids, there were swearing, drugs, girls. I thought you only rapped about cereal, not this scandalous, abhorrent behavior. These songs got nothing to do with Cocoa Puffs. Outside of that, his music is all right, it's cool, it's listenable. But for me, he peaked with the Reese's Puffs rap. And this song, this song's pretty cool too. However, the first Reese's Puffs rap tops both, but that's one of the best songs of all time, so that's hard to top. I also remember that J.G. Wentworth commercial. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. Ooh, love them. I ain't even a fan of opera, but they hitting those notes just right. Listening to this commercial made me want to call them right away, expecting to get money from them cash now and you're singing give me that money asap there are also a few other ones oink oink zoo pounds you know that stupid shit but nothing no song or jingle has ever topped the old spice one now old spice is one of the kings of commercials they still are but the magnum opus for me 
will forever be the mom song. Oh, I didn't see it coming, but it came in a can. Now my sweet son's braid into a man. Mine too, and hey, we know just to the blame. When our sons have fun with women and misbehave. This song is beautiful, so unique, I cry every time I hear it. The mom singing their sorrow about realizing their little boy is becoming a little man. And then they start stalking their sons in very weird ways but the song is amazing the visuals are amazing and this is such an underappreciated commercial the highest viewed re-upload of this is like 600k from nine years ago versus old spices ads that be getting holy moly they don't even have this ad on their channel but they have damn near like 200 ads of the old spice guy responding to tweets <laughs> this, is this who i think it is I'm over here stroking my dick. This ad is legit one of the greatest commercials of all time, if not the greatest. It's like the, if they added the two gay dudes kissing on Mount Rushmore. It's nothing but beautiful. I hope that commercials can go back to the comfort and magic they had back then. And even if the companies can't recreate that magic, you can always just replay the old ones for all of eternity nobody gonna get mad because these commercials are great huh? like how many years have they been playing that tootsie roll pop commercial since 1970 if it ain't broke don't fix it they're also a lot more engaging they make me want to buy the product more i mean i still won't buy it but still like when i saw a red bull commercial back then i'm not thinking about drinking this might give me diabetes or kidney failure or getting a heart attack or dying Nah, I'm thinking drinking this is gonna give me wings, man. And based on the health risk, it actually might. Bring back the old commercials, bro. They're timeless classics. We won't, or at least I won't mind seeing them again. It might actually make me want to get your stuff. Maybe I will buy a Fushigi ball one day. I don't know. If we're gonna keep this capitalistic multi-consumerism system, at least make it fun, bro. I'm getting bored. That's all, man. In conclusion. Whopper, 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 I will never fall in love again until I found her. I said I would never fall.